All right. Welcome again to our Wednesday night Bible study via Zoom. <laughs> Just want to uh, remind everyone that uh, we are recording uh, the service to be uploaded to the uh, church's YouTube channel um either tonight or tomorrow god willing so uh as i always say just you know mind your manners and what you say uh, if you don't want others to uh see it later on um also if you have any questions you can uh, wave your hand and you will be acknowledged or just touch the little uh raise hand icon uh in the zoom uh if you can while the um presenter is presenting you can uh, mute your Mute your line so uh, we don't have um, any kind of interruptions. And then if you do have a question or um, he calls in, he asks for feedback, then you can just, um, you know, raise your hand and unmute and we will recognize you. If you're a little shy and you, you don't want to do that, you can use a chat and send it to someone or to uh, me and we will read the question uh, from the chat or, um, you know, make a reference uh, whatever you said in the chat so that you can uh, be acknowledged. All right, so we're going to go ahead and begin. And like I said before, welcome to everyone. It's good to see everyone uh, today. Um, all right, Reverend Leslie, you can open us a word of prayer, please. Thank you. Well, let us pray. Gracious, loving God and our Father, thank you for another day as we are drawing near to its close. For you have preserved and you have kept us and you have provided for us. And Father, we thank you that you are indeed very dependable. We can trust you with our entire lives, our whole existence is in your hand. And no matter what is happening in our world, we know that you are still God and you are in charge of all things. And so we ask that you would give us the faith and the trust and the confidence in you that you know and you will do what is right by us. As we are still separated, we ask that, Lord, you would continue to unite us by your spirit. And as we strive even through this Bible study to come together and to search the scriptures and uh, to seek to strengthen and encourage our way. We ask that you would bless us and guide us so that your will will be done. Be with the one who would be presenting this evening and grant that as we go into conversation about the text and so on, that Lord, you would open our eyes to see and our hearts to accept and that Lord, we will indeed worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for the efforts of those who put these programs together so that we can stay connected. We pray and ask that you would bless all of our family, church family, wherever they are, and Lord, that you would keep them safe and uh, grant that the time will come soon when we can come together again and worship you in singing and praising and doing the things that become so much a part of our lives. Hear our prayers, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Reverend Leslie, sir. Um, just uh, one announcement. I got a, a message today that um, Brother Lynch was in the hospital and that, um, that he's doing okay now. Not sure if he's back home, but that uh, he's doing a bit better um, at this time. Uh, tonight is a part two um, led by our brother, Patrick Kogel. Uh, we were uh, talking about spiritual warfare, the world, uh, the flesh and the devil. Last week we covered the, covered the world and this week uh, we'll be covering the flesh. I'll go ahead and turn it over now to uh, brother Patrick. You ready for me? All right. Yes, yes sir. Good, good night, everyone. And um, uh, if you can turn with me in your Bible back to Ephesians chapter 2, and uh, we're just going to read uh, verse 3 
Um, that was our um, text uh, for the Bible study, verse one through three. Um, but we're just gonna read verse three as we're gonna speak about the flesh um, tonight. So verse three, as I read, you could follow along, Ephesians two, verse three, and it read, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And again, Father, we just want to thank you that we could open your word together. We ask that you lead us and guide us. This reacts in Jesus' name. Amen. So last Wednesday, we look at how the world influenced us as we engage in spiritual warfare. Um, we define the world as the world system or the moral world. Uh, we could use words like worldliness. Um, and we say that the world system, uh, you know, worldliness uh, is under the domain of Satan and it is indifferent and hostile towards God. Um, that's uh, my definition um, as I take uh, different scriptures um, from the Bible um, that, you know, define to me when the scripture talk about the world, that's the idea, the system um, that is hostile to our God. And of course, it does in, in, um, involve people who is under Satan domain that he uses to try and thwart um, the plan of God. Now tonight, we're gonna continue as we think about uh, the things that influences us in our spiritual warfare. We're gonna continue with the flesh. Now, uh, the flesh and how it influences us as we engage in spiritual warfare. Um, so uh, the definition I wanna give tonight about the flesh would be uh, defined as our human nature. The, the, the natural you and me, we could say the unregenerate part of us, for those who are believers, um, um, the natural man, our fallen body and spirit. Um, so the Bible also uses the word carnal to describe the flesh. Um, I, you know, so that's a broad definition. Um, all these words, carnal, flesh can be used, um, interchangeable it, it really speaking um about the same thing or the natural man uh the fallen nature um the old man um uh, we're not talking about pastor or anyone else um when we use the old man <laughs> we're talking about our old nature um so um that's the flesh and this is the, the problem that we have that we have to live in this body and, and the flesh, even though it, it has been overthrown, it still want to be in charge. And um, it, it have a, a strange resemblance of something that just took place a um, couple months ago um, <laughs> in, in this country. But, <laughs> but um, uh, that's the flesh, right? Um, inside joke, okay? Uh, we're not going to take it any further, but the flesh still want to be in control. Um, and we have to wrestle with it um, daily as we, in, um, we you know, engage in this uh, spiritual warfare. So based on the definition I, I, I just did, uh, do anyone agree or disagree? And, uh, and I really would like um, your definition of how you would define um, based on what you have read and understand uh, what the flesh is all about. And, and the reason why I'm asking that is it's very important for us to know that. And, um, and if we don't know, we should say we don't know because if you don't know you have an enemy, how are you gonna know how to defeat him in a battle, okay? so. Uh, what is your definition? Uh, do you agree with what I said or you have something to add or subtract of what it means by the flesh? All those words I give, uh, carnal man, 
the natural man, fallen nature, um, the unregenerate uh, part of us. Uh, let me hear from as much as can render a definition, please, before we move on. I'm in agreement with you, what, what you say there. Uh, um, it, it's, it's hard to, to really understand all of that. Oh, it seems like there is two of us all the time uh, and one fighting against the other. But that is, uh, that is how it is actually, because um, you know, the, the way we are in the world or came into the world we have this natural body that is, as it were, attitude and behavior, fighting against God. But that as we come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now we, we have um, the, the, the right um, vaccine to fight against the, the pandemic uh, of sin that seems to want to overwhelm us, to consume us. Uh, and that is not, it's not something that goes away uh, by itself, uh, but that um, we we have to be wrestling day and night, every moment of every day, to stay, uh, you know, above the, the the power or the control of the evil one, whose attempt and desire is to bring destruction into our lives. But um, Jesus Christ, His Spirit is in us giving to us that which we need to be not defeated, but to be overcome us. But um, we have a part to play. We have to keep our eyes focused and our intention fixed so that um, we are not deceived or we are not taken left field by the evil one. Amen. Yeah, I thought I agree with most of what I've said. But I don't know if you remember when I did a, a study on um, the spirit, soul, and body. You recall that study, Patrick? Yes. Yeah, well, <clears throat> my take on <clears throat> my lifetime study or my lifetime understanding is that when we <clears throat> were saved or regenerated, God of Scripture said that we were regenerated, regenerated when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. But <clears throat> even in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul actually told us that we need to um, renew our mind. So there are certain things that we are called to do because <clears throat> the flesh is still carrying that storage of, of evil or wrongdoing that we have done in the past. And at the time of salvation, the, you know, you guys can comment after. The, the thing that was actually um, secured was our, the inner man, the spirit man. And that's the, the part that was born again and that was fully renewed. And the Holy Spirit sealed our inner man, our spirit, and also is attached to our spirit. Each of us have, have a spirit. We're given a spirit from birth. And that's the real you. Now the, the body, or the, the you know this carnality is actually the last to be redeemed. All right, the body, in my estimation, from my reading, is that the body is, is not redeemed. So we tend to still carry some of the sinful desires of the flesh, which rise up at times. But because if we should renew our mind with the Word of God and and um, rely on God Himself the indwelling Holy Spirit, the leader of the Holy Spirit, to actually help us to suppress the sinful desire. And um, I feel that, you know, our full maturity comes when we, when we actually have stuffed enough of God's word in our mind. And, and some of the instruction that Jesus Christ he gave his disciples how we should live, how we should conduct ourselves. And, and as we mature with all this full understanding, mental, and, um, and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, then we can put the flesh on the subjection. But it's, it's, it's as I said, it's a, it's a warfare. It's a continuous warfare until, I guess, we are taken out of this world. 
I'll end there. Stop there. Well, um, my take on the flesh from my understanding, um, I'm still looking to see where it has its own brain. Because for some apparent reason, um, it seems to be its own entity. Um, for many times, the flesh, when it tells me it's hungry, I have to feed it. And for some apparent reason, um, it seems to have a very controlling, at times, um, effect on me personally. Um, so as I search scripture, uh, I realize that it's a, an extension of um, the warfare that we already have to engage in spiritually, but there's also a personal battle uh, daily that I have to fight. Um, so my definition of the flesh, it's, um, it, it, it's there. Um, and I've always shared openly and with my dad and others that it, it has its own sentence. And it knows that it doesn't go to a heaven or a hell, but it will return back to the earth. And um, the flesh itself, um, it, it's something there, I believe, that can help us um, to see daily victories. Uh, as the spirit will help us in spiritual warfare, but the flesh is there uh, also, I feel, to help us have daily victories so that we are able to see the power of the Holy Spirit and his ability and his, his, his control. Uh, and when I say control, yes, if, you're, if your spirit is subjected to his, then he should have some measure of control. And if he has deli delivered us or or rendered sin powerless uh, through the Messiah on the cross, then we should be able to, uh, with his help, uh, overcome these uh, fleshly attacks that um, I don't think I would say is not daily, but it can even be boiled down to hourly. But I'll stop there uh, for the sake of the story. Well, I think that, well, go, sorry. Anybody else or can I go? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That that um those verses here in, in chapter six really spells it out in, in very graphic ways to us. And, and you know, one other thing I like about the Bible is that um it deals with things that we can visualize. Yeah. And and uh, it, it speaks about uh, you know how we must arm ourselves put on the whole armor of God. And we know what that, that means. In, in, in those days, uh, uh, they, they had things to protect them from the sword and the spear and the, the, the arrow and the, all of those things. Uh, and he says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of, and powers and uh, against rulers of darkness of this world. Uh, and uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And boy, don't we see that? I mean, the, it, 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 is, it is like something that we cannot escape from. Whether we like it or not, it is there. And whether we ask for it or not, it is coming. And it is operating. And this is why we have to stay put on the armor. It's like uh, we shouldn't take it. We should. I don't know. If we should take it off when we go to sleep, <laughs> because sometimes we do, and that is why we have sometimes them antics dreams where we dream uh, about him when we sleep. But we we need to stay armored up from top to bottom because the arrows are being, uh, you know, shot at us from every angle, and there's no stopping because. Um, uh, the devil knows that his time is drawing near. He, he, he knows. He doesn't know the time, but he can sense it. He can feel it, that it's coming. So he's doing all that he can to, uh, you know, kind of crush us and uh, make our lives uh, a misery and um, all of those things because he wants to weaken us. He wants to break down our resistance. And uh, if we rely too much on the, 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 the our flesh uh, to defend us. We, we are we are very very exposed. We have to trust God 
to, to be there for us and cover us so that um, we can ward off the attacks of the evil one, which goes night and day, every minute, every second of the day. All right. Amen. Thank you, guys. And like I said, I was I was looking for every um, definition and help we can get because I understand that this thing uh, about the flesh is very complicated, and um, we can't have enough information. And I hope that will help somebody have some clarity um, or some more knowledge of what they are, you know, wrestling against when we talk about the flesh. Now, um, I have. Uh, I, Can I say I one thing, Brother Patrick? Repeat. No, I say one thing. Sorry. I, um, I know, like, our brother Don and I were talking about it the other day, but, um, you know, with this, you know, we're, we're born into sin, and a lot of people don't like to hear that. But one, one example, if you look at it, just look at children. You don't have to teach children to say no. That, that's just how they come out. That's no is easy. You have to teach your children to share. You have to teach your children to say yes. You have to teach your children to say please and thank you and those kind of things. You know, if, if you leave it up to them with, with, with no training at all, you know, it, it's, it's easy where we, they could be unruly, you know, and, and that would be the, you know, the nature of the flesh, like you're saying, the, 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 carnal, the carnal being that, uh, you know, we come into this earth as. And so that's why we have to be renewed. That's Amen. It. Um, so uh, we're going to move on. So uh, Brother Dan um, mentioned something earlier that Paul said we should re renew our mind, right? Re renew our mind. And um, I smile when he said that because uh, that's the next thing I I'm going to talk about. Not just renew our mind. There's three things that um, I find with the flesh um, that we need to know about. And one, Paul said renew your mind. And you know why? Because the flesh itself <laughs> has its own mind. Um, uh, Br Brother Dan um, said, um, and I'm talking about the son now, that it is it, it, it is own entity. And he right. It, it, it have its own things, right? And um, so it has its own mind. And, uh, and so if we are not controlled by the spirit, the flesh have its own thing that he's going to do. And that's why we need to renew our mind so we can be thinking the things that God wants us to do. Um, Colossians 2, uh, if you can't find it, um, uh, you can just uh, write it and read it after. Colossians 2, verse 8, um, the Apostle Paul writes, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Um, I think I supposed to read 18. That's a typo. Uh, sorry. So it's Colossians 2 verse 18. Um, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And, um, and so the flesh of his own mind, it of his own thinking, um, he, the things that the flesh would have you do will be contrary towards what God would have you to do. And, um, and Paul said, you know, any man that is operating after the natural man, um, he is literally just puffed up. And this is the, the mind of the flesh. He is just puffed up in his fleshly mind. Um, that, and I'm pretty sure there's many more scripture. Um, if you want, you can turn to Romans chapter eight. Um, very familiar um, scripture. And look at verse five through seven. Romans eight, five. The apostle Paul again, he write, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, 
but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So if, if, if a man is walking after the Holy Spirit, then the thing that the Holy Spirit would have him to do, uh, that's what he will do. But if he's not, he will be doing the thing that the flesh having to do. And, and, and again, the, the emphasis here is that the flesh has its own mind, therefore it has its own agenda. And its agenda is to keep you from doing the things that God would have you to do. Look at verse six. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. So if, if we're talking two direction, if you're heading one direction, the end there is death. And, and, and that's the natural man. Um, the, the carnal minded man, the natural, no matter how luxurious or how uh, nice the life may be, if you remain in the natural, you, the end result is death, uh, plain and simple. Um, so to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And, 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 and you know, um, that, that's a hint in the sense of, uh, I don't think we, um, I hope I'm not using the wrong word or term, that trying to subdue the flesh um, is unruly and is not going to be subjected. Uh, what you want to do is, as the Bible would say, is kill the flesh, right? The, the, the flesh is unruly. It would not be subjected to any, anyone, right? And um, it, it said it is not subjected to the law of god neither indeed can be um in other words i, I would say don't uh, well i guess when i was like a young believer and i'm pretty and, and i'm almost can certain that most of us when we just got saved we do the same thing we try to make a plea our bargain with the flesh in other words we try to speak to it nicely and we convince ourselves we're, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and what happened? If we're honest, we put your hand up. Every time we do what? We fall. Every time we fall. No, I don't want to get off into like individual sin, right? Uh, because that's another thing of the flesh. It will take us from what we want to accomplish. But um, we have those um, issues in our life and we can all identify when we're trying to make bargain or tell ourselves that I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to say this again. And, and, and you try and you never win the flesh. You never beat the flesh because the flesh is not subjected to the law of God. Neither can it be, right? It's unruly. As Brother Dan said, its own entity, it has its own mind, it has its own agenda, and it's going in its own direction. And, and if you follow him down that way, the scripture said you will it lead to death. Now, before I move on to something else about the flesh, if anyone want to chime in on anything um, that I just said? Ready? Now, if anybody have time, <clears throat> I believe you can read uh, Romans 6 in the entirety. But I just want to... <clears throat> yeah, we, we, I have that um, uh, for Are something. You going to touch that? Right. Yeah, tonight. Yeah, that. we're going to touch that tonight. I'll leave, so. I'll leave that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, we're going to touch that tonight. Anyone else? All right, let's move on then. So the flesh have its own mind, as far as I can see. Um, and, you know, with, with mind, it come wisdom, right? Um, it have its own wisdom. Um, if you allow the flesh to dictate what you think, um, it will do so and do so readily, right? And a matter of fact, it do so every day. And we just have to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. So First Corinthians chapter two, First Corinthians two, and I'm gonna read from verse 11 through 14. So the apostle Paul again is speaking and he said, 
talking about the mind and wisdom. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, the thing of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. And, and basically what they're saying is this, right? I, I, I know um, you will watch TV show and see, um, we call them magician or illusionist, who could tell you, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I could tell you what you're thinking or make you say things or write things. And, uh, but in, in all reality, no one can know what is in your mind except you, your spirit. Whatever you're thinking is only you will know that. Um, that that that's a that's a rule, right? And um, and so the apostle Paul used that um, illustration, saying the same thing about God. Um, just like how oh, no one can know what is going on in your mind but you, you cannot know the mind of God. Expect the spirit of God, and um, and which is so. Therefore, if we know what God wants. Our desire is only mean that we have to have the spirit of God so we can know what he expects and um and what um he desires. And um that 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 also um you you could uh, that that's that that's a measure of assurance too, that you belong to God. If you have those desires to do what God wants you to do, it tells you that you have the spirit of God. You would not have those desires, right? Uh, those desires does not come naturally. It does not come from the natural man. Verse, um, so verse 12 said, no, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And so it makes sense. If God, who is our, have our wisdom, know that the only way we can know what he desires, if we can read his mind or know what is in his mind, and um, so it's, it, it's, it's natural that he would have to do what? Give us his mind, right? Um, and he given us his spirit so we can know what he desires or he requires of us. Uh, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. but the natural man, the the Andre regenerate, the fallen, the old man, the flesh, receive it not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, spiritually discerned. Um, the, 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 the world, the flesh have its own wisdom. And um, and if you are led by the flesh, you will do things according to the flesh. This is why the Apostle Paul um, said in the in the first Bible study that not last week but the the previous uh, when we said we wrestle what not against what flesh and blood. That's what the natural man the natural man see you and me fighting. But the spiritual man know that there is something behind that, right? Um, that the, the, the battle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, flesh and blood, it's against powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness of this world and people in high places, right? Um, flesh of his own wisdom. Uh, turn in your Bible also to James, um, one of those little books that. Um, Anytime you can't find James, just ask Peter. They're always close by each other. Uh, I don't know if you notice. Um, so James chapter 3, verse 3, 13. James 3, verse 13, and I'm going to read through 17. So listen to what James said. Verse 13 of chapter 3. Who is a wise man and endue with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, devilish. 
For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Um, that's, that's the wisdom of the flesh in contrast to the wisdom from the Spirit of God. And you can easily tell the difference where the wisdom that you spew, if it's fleshly, natural, or it's come from the Spirit of God. Um, the flesh have its own wisdom. If anyone want to chime in, now is the time before I move to the third thing that I noticed about the flesh. Well, let me, let me, let me say uh, this as we discuss the, the flesh. So uh, in Galatians chapter five, um, one of the, the, the indications of, you know, if, if we want to know what the flesh produces, or as we have said, it has its own mind. Um, in verse 17 of Galatians five, it says for the flesh, lusteth against the spirit so it it it, it, it has a mind and it, and it it, 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 it it's going after uh, the thing of God and the spirit against the flesh it says also the spirit of God it, it, it will also retaliate against it because it's a battle and uh, when God wages war he never he, he never loses uh, then it says and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But it says, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. We'll skip past that for now. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now we want to know what the flesh produce. Because, you know, it says adultery, fornication, uncleansiness, last viciousness. I can never say that word. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the flesh produces everything that God uh, lists also that will never be in heaven. Um, so we know th that it is, but then... It also gives uh, what the, the, the spirit produces. Uh, and I guess it's good just to see both sides in the, in the sense that we're able to identify when we're walking in the flesh and identify when we're walking in the spirit. It says, but the fruit of the spirit, which we know is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Um, so just to kind of highlight the, the flesh, it's a nasty thing um, because you see, it doesn't have any intention of assisting us in getting closer to God. The Bible clearly states, listen, this thing war against me and I war against it, you know? So I um, just wanted to bring that on top of what you, you were just sharing, uh, even though we did discuss wisdom, that we're able to identify where, where God bestows wisdom on something because it produces something. And then we know when the devil is also trying to produce something. So it's, it's just an addition of that, that, that separation or that difference that you just mentioned, you know? And the Bible clearly labels it and lists it for us. So we, we know what the, 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 the flesh um, produces, you know? But that's just my take on it. It's well taken. Yes, Sister Maxine. You have to unmute Sister Maxine. Yes, and going to the next verse after John, verse 24 says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Therefore, we who are children of God, that should be our daily practice to crucify 
crucify the flesh with the affections and the lusts thereof. That's the two verses down from where Don just read, Galatians yes. 5, mm -hmm. verse 24. Amen. Right. Um, so, okay, so we see that the flesh, it has its own mind, mm -hmm. <laughs> have its own wisdom. Uh -huh. So we have to first renew our mind. Then we have to know the things that God has given to us, meaning allow the Holy Spirit to lead and direct our health. Yes. The flesh will gladly do that. And um, also, the flesh have its own desires. Um, both Brother Dan and Sister Maxine have briefly touched on it. Um, so look, um, our scripture that we read, our open scripture um, uh, tonight um, was from Ephesians chapter two, verse three. Um, the flesh has its own desires. It said, among whom also we all had our conversation. That's our lifestyle in time past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Um, the natural man was just going, doing what comes naturally. naturally. Just like when you're hungry, you figure that you just you need eat. to go eat something um, yes. without any regard or restriction. Thoughts. That's how the flesh is. When it comes to sin, it does crave and crave and crave and crave. Um, and so it has its own desires. And it's one of those things that seems to be never satisfied. Um, another scripture that uh, you read, but I want to read it again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It said, this I say, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust yes, of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. Yes. Um, if you don't, then you will fulfill the desires of the flesh. And another verse that Sister Maxine read, verse 24, it said, and they that are, are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lust. It has its own desires, and if we allow it to, to lead us, consume we, us. Do, we yeah. would fulfill those desires. Now, um, in, in scripture, um, uh, these words are used interchangeably. Uh, lust, passion, desire, um, depends on your translation, that's how it will come out. Um, you know, um, lust, passion, desire, pretty much the same thing concerning um, uh, what it means in the Bible. So the flesh have its own mind, its own wisdom, its own desire. Now, I'm gonna move on to something else. Um, uh, Pastor make um, a point and um, I kind of coin it this way. Um, two spirits try to control one body that, that, that I just put that in my heading, right? It's like two spirit trying to control one body. Now, uh, Brother Dan um, points out the obvious. In our salvation, what is not saved is your body. This body have not been regenerated. It, that's why it's still broken down. Um, I, I would not repeat the name, but someone groaned earlier of how <laughs> broken down the body is. Right? <laughs> it is not regenerated as yet. Um, this body, nevertheless, we have been given a new spirit. Uh, yes. The scripture used like awaken, quicken, reborn. Brother Dan used the word regenerated, right? Um, now we can, um, we are alive to God in the sense, yeah, we could say that, alive to him and the things of him, we know, and we can now please him. But unfortunately, we are still in this old body, right? 
this old body that um, still have a sin residue in it. Uh, uh, earlier in my Christian life, I've just thinking about these, I, I it humor me, and um, and I'm gonna give each one of you a chance um, if you can recall something that you have heard. But somebody trying to describe. Uh, why this body still sin, even though we regenerated? And um, the person said, "You ever see a lizard lose their tail?" And I said, "Yes. They, well, it's dead, but there's still some life in it, and and it would flicker for a while until it <laughs> until it dies. So the reason why we sin is because there are residual sins in us, and eventually it would just go away. But unfortunately, um, I don't think that's what." The scripture wanted, right? Um, nature. I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it worked like that because the contention was at salvation, the sin nature is being done away with. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a debatable scripture. I don't want to go into it tonight. Uh, this is not an easy topic or easy thing um, to understand um, because uh, there are some clear indications that, listen, there is, and um, from the scripture we read, there is a opposition, right? Um, the flesh opposes the spirit of God. And, uh, and we're going to read those scriptures. So uh, the two spirits, one body, this body of ours is been, um, we have been given the spirit of God, and now we need to yield to one or the other, right? Yield to one or the other. Um, so we can easily know which one we are led by. Now, uh, Brother Dan, uh, I'd read my scripture earlier, but I allow him to read it because I know that he would bring out something that I probably would. Uh, but I'm going to refresh your mind because there's one point I want to make. And, um, and that's in Galatians chapter 5. I'm just going to read from verse 19 through 21. Um, so here reading. So this is for the second time you're hearing this tonight, right? It said, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, Seditions, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, they, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, the Apostle Paul make it clear, this is not an exhaustive list. He say, and such like, okay? meaning that you can't count all of these and say these are the only things, right? They, they're more. Um, but what he's trying to say is that these things and things like this is an indication that when these things appear, the pastor said, it rear their ugly head. It's telling you that the flesh is in control. Yes. So for instance, um, when someone wants to, uh, someone to challenge you, um, they drive in and they cut you off and your reaction is to kill them, then that's the flesh, right? <laughs> that, 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 that's the mind of I the flesh. <laughs> yeah, that's the mind of the flesh and in yes. the week of the flesh, go kill that person, right? Um, when, um, and you know, and, and so you can know, when somebody um, says something to you, um that you know you don't like um the flesh uh, hate that person um right hatred witchcraft when you try to um look into those things that pertain to god right um it's a it, you know it, it, it's witchcraft anytime you look into things that pertain to god you know like knowing the future um, want to see what tomorrow go when God only give you today, you know, stuff like that. Um, it, it tell you that the flesh, right? The flesh want to know these things. 
idolatry. You know, you set up someone, something uh, in the place where God alone should sit. Um, it, it, it's the flesh, right? Um, heresies, you know, uh, have to do with scriptures. Drunkenness have to do with your lifestyle. Um, reveling, same thing. Um, variance, emulation, all these things. And so Paul is saying, listen, when you see these things trying to come out of you, it is the flesh trying to lead, right? Yeah. The flesh trying to lead. But when you see these things that I'm going to read now, verse 22 and 23, it said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, long suffering. And, uh, you know, like I said, very long. Uh, I, I don't think long suffering is actually a real word. It, it's, it's telling you what to do. Just suffer long, long time. Uh, that literally, it, it's one of those uh, words that is not really a word. It's actually an action, right? You just suffer long. Suffer, yes. Just continue to suffer. Suffer. <laughs> Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, such as against such there is no, no law. No. That, that's the amazing thing. Even in a sinful world with sinful men, any one of these qualities, they would not make a this. Even the most evilest man would not come and say, don't love anyone. Uh. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> don't, don't be peaceful. The evil, sinful man would not make that law, right? And they want no, it for themselves. Yeah. Not, all, not only that, there's no um, judicial law or you would say uh, um, scientific law that can prevent these things from happening. That's the, and, and that's the amazing thing. Yes, it's from God. No judicial law or scientific law or physics or whatever can stop all of these things. It, it can't stop it from our faith. It can't stop it from being gentle. It cannot stop it from being good. You can choose to be good, whether they want to be. You can choose to love. It doesn't really matter. No law can, no law can prevent you from loving, right? None whatsoever. Um, love comes from God. It, it, it's because it comes from God. And so yes. no one can do that. Meekness. And so again, so there is no law. So the scripture now is telling you that you have this body and you have these two contrary entity, as Brother Dan so wisely put it, um, trying to rule and gain um, precedent in your life and you have to allow one or the other and um and the, in romans chapter six we're gonna read about a couple of stuff um as i tell brother dan um not to read it because we have it to to discuss but we can see the conflict the evidence as the scripture said manifest whether it's the manifestation our spiritual manifested. So anytime you see the reveling and so forth, you know that that's the flesh. When someone cuts you off and your reaction is still like, hey, just cut them off back, you know, that's the flesh. flesh. When you humble yourself, the me, when you suffer, um, when you are gentle, uh, it's the spirit leading at that moment, mm -hmm. right? We have to continue to do that. Um, if anyone want to chime in and say anything, um, do that now, and then I'll move to the next thing that I want to touch about this lecture. You ever wonder why God didn't just kind of just move away all of those evil thoughts and desires when you got saved uh, and, and um, just drive them out so you don't have no problem with them anymore? Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Um, you know, early in my Christian walk, and I, I share something. So I, I, you know, you're battling the sins of the flesh. And I asked God to remove a desire, right? And um, 
So finally, the desire could not be removed, <laughs> right? But I, I learned it later why. It's because as a, a human being and as a physical human being, that desire is tied into your physical nature, which you still need to have to exist in this physical world. For instance, you know, um, you know, to, to eat, you, you, you need a desire, you have to be hungry, right? And, and so you cannot eliminate your physical nature while you're still living in this physical world because there's physical things to still enjoy while you're here. Um, and so those desires are not going to be removed, as I learned later on, until this entire body is transformed like the Lord, where we can still function humanly, but also superhumanly. In other words, physical Jesus did not walk through the wall, and he ate super regenerated the new jesus appear through the wall but yes still he still eat right and um that that's the body that we want but god said not until he transformed me yet we cannot have it now so we still have to deal with the the entice and the lust and the lure and the you know the aches and the pain of this old body um while we still you know live here um so saying that, I want to move to the next thing, uh, conflict with the flesh, the conflict of the flesh. And of course, we have touched on that in here and there, um, little verses, but we want to look on it in a more in-depth. Um, so you can turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6. And um, this is... Um, the you could, you could put this in your... Uh, as a subheading, probably in your Bible, the victory chapter, right? <laughs> um, it, it, it is a, a victory chapter. Um, Roman chapter six. Um, so the first thing uh, we need to know is who we are in Christ. Um, the Apostle Paul uh, put that in Romans chapter six, and I think we should know. So uh, I'm going to read from one to ten. So he said, what shall we send it? Shall we continue in sin that grace shall abound? God forbid. Um, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? Now, a couple of times you're going to see the Apostle Paul use this word. Verse 3, no. Verse uh, 6, no. Verse 9, no. And that word, no, is the same word that you get knowledge from. And, and so you need to know these things. You need to have knowledge of these things, right? Um, you don't have any knowledge of these things, then guess what's going to happen? Uh, your chance of victory going to be slim, right? If, if you said you need to know, you need to know. So verse 3 said, Know ye not that so many of us, we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him, and by baptism into death, that like Christ was raised up from the dead um, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of the dead, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he live it unto God. And so the, the Apostle Paul, you know, is painting the picture that what we see physically happen to Jesus is what literally happened on a spiritual level for us. That Christ died, we died with him, and when Christ was raised, 
he raised in a newness. Um, remember, I, I just said earlier, when Christ was resurrected, he could have walked through a wall. He appeared and he disappeared. Obviously, something concerning his body have changed. He's not the same. But yet, you could feel bone because he did touch me. This is not a spirit, right? And uh, so something is changed. And he's saying, when we have been regenerated, there is a change. There's a spiritual change. And the key word is that we need to know these things. We need to know that the whole man has been crucified um, with Christ. And so the body of sin might be destroyed. And, uh, and that's our hope that one of these days, this body, which God's going to transform, give us a new body, where we're going to be, what, saved ultimately from the presence of sin, where no more sin is present or can affect our body. Uh, we need to know that, um, that just as Christ being raised from the dead and diet no more, um, and sin have what? No more dominion over him. Um, Two times the scripture used that. Um, one, um, the dead is free from sin, and um, the dead is also free from the law. I normally use this uh, this question when I like in Sunday school if that come across. Um, imagine you're driving down the street, you're speeding, police chasing you, he stop you. You sure will get a speeding ticket, right? That's the law. Now, what if before you catch you, you crash, you meet in the accident and you die? What happened? Do you get a speeding ticket? No, you're dead. The law have no more um, jurisdiction over you as a dead person, right? <laughs> the same thing with sin. The person who dead sees from sinning, <laughs> right? And, um, and so um, that's what's going to happen ultimately. But that's who we are in Christ. We are dead in Christ, and um, and therefore we are raised, and we should walk in new life. But let's move on to be how to be victorious, right? How to be victorious. Look at verse eleven. Now, so continuing from what Paul is said, first we need to know these things. So, because we now know these things, this is what the apostle said for us to have victory. Likewise. Reckon you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Now, we didn't physically, we were not crucified on the cross. So he said, reckon yourself. Think just the way that Christ was um, dead. Think of yourself also dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So therefore, right? He said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Um, the two nature are the two spirit that are trying to control your body. It said, don't allow or let it. Um, the idea that he said, let not sin reign, is that mean that you can stop it from reigning? If, if I say, don't let Brother Dan come through that door, you telling me that I have the ability to prevent him from coming through that door. Um, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey its laws. He said, neither yield your members of instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members of instrument of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Uh, what then? Shall, um, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that whom you yield yourself servant to obey is servant you are whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, are of obedience unto righteousness. Um, but they say, but God be thanks um, that while we were a servant to sin, of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart 
that from form of doctrine which we're delivering to you. Now, the, the, the victory that we have now is we realize that we have been delivered and now we have been given the Spirit of God so we can now have victory by not obeying the spirit, um, the fallen, the flesh. Remember in our opening scripture, it said, in our unregenerated self, we walk according to the flesh, fulfilling the lust and the desire. Therefore, we did not have um, the power to say no to the flesh. Whatever the flesh did say, that's what we do. And we do it easily. And a matter of fact, as we continue to read the, the, the verse before it, it tells us that many of us wasn't even aware that, listen, everything that we're doing is dictated by the flesh and under the reign of Satan. Um, these are, we were called what? Children of disobedience, who the, the prince of this year reign over, and they do exactly what he wants them to do. But then when we come to Christ, we have been given the spirit of God. Now we can do the thing that God wants us to do. But guess what? This flesh is not going away. It still wants to be in charge. And as we read in Galatians 5.16, it says that the spirit, the flesh, lost it against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are, they're what? Contrary to each other, right? They oppose each other and preventing us from doing what God. But the Apostle Paul gave us a little secret weapon here. He said, first, don't let it, right? Don't let it rain. Uh, meaning that you have the power now to not let sin rain. Not only that, um, he said, you don't have to yield your membership because my hand by itself is not sinful but my hand can do sinful things, right? My mouth by itself is not sinful, but it can do all those things that we read um, earlier in Galatians, right? Or we can partake in all those things and do sinful stuff. Just like how oh, I can speak word of peace, I can speak word of evil, right? And so we don't yield our members um, to sin. Um, the, the secret, comes in the world yield. Now, we normally think of yield uh, as, uh, as a road rule. And, and so it is where we, we give someone else the, uh, that we said by law have the right of way. So we yield. Um, it's also, you know, um, we allow something else to to go for it right and so it said don't yield to sin don't yield um yield your members um to to as instrument of sin but you can yield yield it as instrument of righteousness but yield is not just um a a, a rule or a law as rule it's also a accounting term right and and that's where the secret comes in it said, in, in the Apostle Paul said, he said, know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves, servant to obey, his servant you are to whom you obey, whether to sin and to death are obedience and to righteousness. And, and, and from an accounting term, that's a powerful statement. Now, when you're talking about yielding in accounting or finance or money, if you know there's, there's two simple rules, the more you put and the longer you keep it there is the greater the reward. Everybody understand that? The more you put, the longer you leave it there, the greater the reward. Now, um, you can, any one of you can go to your bank. Not all and, the time. Repeat? Not all the time. Agree with you. Not in America. But 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 no, but that's the general the general rule. If you if you go in your bank and you say, okay, you, you want to put uh one hundred dollar in a CD for three months, 
and $10,000 in a CD for three months, I guarantee you the 10,000 gonna give you the bigger interest rate. Cause you put, you're putting more. The more you put and the longer you leave it there, the general, the, the greater the reward. This, this is kind of the idea the Apostle Paul is saying. Whoever you yield to more, you're gonna become that service. So for instance, if you keep saying no to the flesh, you know what that mean? The more you keep saying more, no, is the is the less you're gonna you're gonna give to him. But the more you keep saying yes, what's gonna happen? The more addicted you're gonna. And it's the same thing with the spirit. The more you keep saying yes, is the easier you're gonna have to say yes. And if you keep saying no, it's the easy. So you keep yielding to the spirit. The, the um the growth gonna come and you become the 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 servants of the spirit but if you keep yielding to the flesh it said what you will become the servant of the flesh and so the the idea is to is to um I, I understand it um earlier like like for like for young Christians that listen um you just got saved you're gonna fall and you probably fall over and over because you're coming out of a lifestyle where you do everything that the flesh wants. And now for the first time you're seeing an opposition. No, why? Because now you're alive. You realize, oh, all of those stuff that I was doing was wrong, right? No, I want to do what God said, but I'm having problem, right? Um, and they wonder how can I, uh, you know, why can't this, like the pastor said, just go away one time, doesn't happen. You have to continue yield over. Um, the Apostle Paul was said, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you die daily, right? You, you surrender daily, momently. It's, it's an ongoing, it's a walk, right? Um, walk in the spirit that you're it, not fulfilled. Exactly. So, and, and so if you say walk in this, it means it's a continuous lifestyle. And if you continue, continue, then you'll get better. Um, so, keep yielding to the spirit denying the flesh that tendency and temptation and the loss and the desire um not gonna eradicate and go away but um i i you know any any mature believer would acknowledge this the thing that used to easily tempt you early in your christian life doesn't really tempt you that easily no the devil of new stuff I, i'm like we could agree that right um Things that we that used to easily tempt me um, doesn't easily tempt me like before, um, you know. Like and 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 sometimes it's simple things, right? Um, after being with the Lord for a couple of years, it shouldn't be an issue for people to decide whether I go to church or not. So if, if, if we should pass those stuff, right? Like those are like elementary of the faith. Uh, you, we, we shouldn't have people in the Lord 10, 15 years and still wrestling whether they go to church, whether they go to church or not, or you know, whether they read their Bible or not. I'm like, these are like elements of the faith. Um the 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 the, the, um, the 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 devil, the flesh, the world will do the you know, use these things to to distract you, right? Um but as we continue to grow. Those are not the things that the devil will throw at us the temple because we are maturing. We realize certain things. So new things are gonna come. Um, agree? Disagree? Yeah, the mega millions. I'm so to say, Patrick. Um, yeah, go ahead. um I was well, I'm gonna put it just straight. We were in a what is it uh Sunday school class and and uh, we were on a subject, I think, I don't know, it was Samson. And I said, man, look how Samson's strong, and he's a man of God, and man of stuff. And yet, still, they make the lie, let us trick him like that. Mm -hmm. but, um, I'm just going to go back to the, the thing is that, you know, maturity, great. We renew our minds and all that stuff. We walk, follow in the leading. But um, the devil is also very slick. And he knows us from where little boys and stuff. And he knows our likes and it's like, I'm gonna just jump jump ahead. But sometimes he bring certain temptations right there, right in front of you. And if, you know, 
if you, you know, the Lord tell you like certain things, you know, flee. Okay. You're youthful lust and all that. So if you are tempted, you know, you need some certain, certain situation you have to actually run. Because I was sure enough in, in uh, it, it's not uh, brother Dan, it, it's not certain situation now. It's um that's the only remedy that the Bible gave us when it comes to temptation. Yes. It's a, to flee. <laughs> to flee. <laughs> to flee. <laughs> especially no. when it comes to you know lusting after lusting after the flesh or a woman. And I was I was just gonna say quickly that I was in Sunday school class, man, you know, like I'm overcoming. No woman can come to unless I decide for those dumb. And um, I went to the supermarket just after summer school and a woman came out of stand right in front of me and I started to melt and I had to get away, I had to run. So that's what I tell you. So the enemy, the, you know, careful of sometimes what you say because the enemy sometimes find that perfect temptation for you that will actually let, let your knee buckle. So you have to prepare at all times to, um, you know, in a defense and, and, you know, follow the leading of the spirit. I, I rely on God, I should say. The sinful nature doesn't go away. I, I mean, if, if, it, if it went away when we got saved, I mean, just take no away. We didn't have no problem. Well, I agree with you, Rev. That's true. It, 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 it come up. That's, that is why the scripture says, walk in the spirit that you might not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It, it's a daily thing that we must do and never get so cocky in ourselves that we think that, man, I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. I have arrived. Uh, yeah. That's why Delilah came right in front of me, Rev. She came right here, and yeah. I got very weak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, see that, you see that the devil was right there to Rev. Oh, he came. He said, let me show him something. <laughs> I, I, think, I think what we need to do also is to pray for a lot of people right now because I was just kidding when I said a mega million is close to a billion dollars and people want to take advantage of it and so they're going to tie their 10%. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a temptation for a lot of people right now, you know. Yes, yeah, sister. Hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, if you win, I want my mortgage pay off here. Thank you. <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> Go ahead, sister Maxi. Not unmute though, unmute. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, when Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and he said, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So if whether or not we're standing in a line or wherever we find ourselves and the temptation presents itself to us, we should decide at that point, are we going to be a follower of Christ or are we going to just go the other way? So, you know, temptations will present itself, but we have to remember whose we are and remember what Christ said. If we are to be a disciple, we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross. Amen. And as uh, as Sister Mastin said that, I, I wanted to point something out uh, while we do this study. Um, and is the idea of temptation, right? Now, we're talking about the flesh itself and the conflict we have. And um, I don't want us to, to move off into specific things like temptation because the um we have a, a glossary of things that we read that um temptation is just one of the many things yes. that the flesh um the flesh uh, will manifest itself into right and, uh, yes. and 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 i think that's a mistake we make that we believe that the only time we sin in if we have some form of um physical a reaction towards something that we deem sinful, but yet still we prideful sometimes, <laughs> right? Um, we 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 put certain things or certain one in our life, and we don't uh, we don't understand that that idolatry and all those other stuff, right? And um and 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 that's why when we read that list, when you see these things are coming forward, it tell you that your flesh it's is dictating control. the way that you yes. live. And, um, and so I think it's a good thing for us to go back and read, you know, 
and uh, how are we reacting to other things, you know, um, in our life and not just uh, a sensual temptation. And we think that sensual temptation, that's the only thing, <laughs> that's the only thing that is out there. And yeah. we, we're doing the, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we are, the, the flesh is having us doing the other things and we don't see that as a sin. Um, so, I listened to, to, to the, the after comments and, and what is telling us is this, right? Do not put any confidence in the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you're going to lose. You cannot defeat the flesh in the flesh. We read the scripture. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither can it be. You lose that battle every time. And if you go back and read Samson, that's exactly what happens. If he were walking in the spirit, he, he was given the spirit of God to do a work, it would not have fallen the way he fell. He was doing it in his flesh and he fell. And all of us are going to fall all the time, right? Um, if, we're not, if, we, if we don't walk in the spirit, we are going to fulfill the, the loss of the flesh. And the only way we can, we can defeat the flesh is to walk in the spirit daily. Um, yielding our members to righteousness. And as we yield and yield, um, we continue to yield. We have the daily victory that we have. Now, I have um, the ongoing conflict is my um, next thing that I want to look at. The ongoing conflict. Um, this thing, the flesh. Um, not my physical body, but what's inside driving it um, to go contrary towards God. It, it is evident and cannot be denied. Even if we don't completely understand what is going on, right? It, it's evident that there is something in us that is opposing God. Um, we say it is a sinful nature. Now, this study is important because there are teachings out there that the regenerated believer does no longer have the sinful nature. You have those teachings. And they will use scripture. You have teachings say God crucified the old man with all his sinful desire. In other words, and they find scripture. Uh, the Bible said, you know, you don't sin no more. The, the man, and, and so these things, but if you, if, but a believer, you and I know, we can see daily, there is something in us that still wants us to oppose God, right? And, and, and it's a daily conflict. Um, the entire, um, I'm trying to remember the word here, uh, the entire book of First John was written because of these type of belief when it comes to the flesh. And um, if the flesh um, sinful, and it, it can 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 a a, a a believer, you know, um, a righteous person reside in this flesh, and they go to one of the teaching is docetism. Um, it, the idea is that the flesh itself is sinful. There's nothing good, and they, you know, Paul Paul said, "In my flesh, there's you know such and such," and it is a heretic teaching um and and so they use that idea to say listen because the flesh is sinful and there's no good in it uh, it doesn't really matter what you want to do just live as you please uh, it's the flesh right and in other words they give them life to sin and the apostle and john had to write listen if you continue to sin you, you don't belong to god <laughs> plain and simple that cannot be the lifestyle of a regenerated person. And, and so it, this thing, the flesh, is evidence. The scripture make it clear. It, it's an opposing factor, entity, whatever you want to coin it. Um, in, and it's something that we have to deal with and it's real. And each day is opposing everything that God would have us to do. In, 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 in Romans chapter 7, the Apostle Paul kind of shed some light into the conflict, right? And uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 15. 
So the Apostle Paul, with this conflict, he said, uh, no. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I ate, that do I. If then I do the things which I would not do, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more high that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that it is in me, that it is in my flesh dwelleth no good things. For, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now it is, now if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Um, so that's chapter uh, verse 21. And and it pretty much echoing um that statement, echoing um uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. And uh, let's read it one more time. Um, it said, um, For the flesh lusted after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the thing that you would. And so it, it, it's evident that. There's something opposing you that when it, you want to do something for God, it's not going to come easy. There's something always wanting you to do what is wrong. Um, we have a lot of examples. Um, Ananias and Sapphira, um, they were encouraged, motivated, right, um, to give. And, 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 and probably initially, that's their desire uh, because we provoke one another to good work, right? That's what the scripture said, right? But then when the money comes, the flesh kick in and say, hey, man, you don't have to give all of that. There's no way they're going to know how much you sell that land for. Just give them a part and they say, hey, we give all, <laughs> right? And, um, and, and the spirit of God made them an example, right? Um, that's what he did. He made them an example and that we lie against the Holy Spirit. Uh, the flesh kick in, right? Um, you know, you, you have a desire to do good and you come the flesh. Um, Peter went to the Gentiles, fellowshipping, doing what he's supposed to do. But guess what happened? Those that came from Jerusalem saw him, the flesh kick in, what he did. He played the hypocrite and the apostle Paul saw it and publicly chastising, right? He made the flesh get the better of him. Um, and, and, and that's where the Apostle Paul is saying that when, when, whenever we want to do what is right, you can bet that evil is right there waiting for us to do what is wrong. And that's why doing the things of God doesn't come easy. Um, this scripture probably can be used, right? Uh, remember what Jesus said um, to, um, to Judas? What you do, do quickly. Remember that statement? What you do, do quickly. Um, let that be for every one of us, right? When God put a good thing in our heart to do, do it quickly, right? <laughs> do it quickly. Because you give the devil time, it'll convince you not to do it, right? And I'm pretty sure you could look back a lot of time, you 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 have something purpose to do and something come up, right? And what happened? You find a way not to do it again, right? Not to do it, and, and do it quickly. Um, the scripture, use that even with the word of God. A person heard the word of God, don't understand it, the devil just come and do what? Yeah, he didn't respond quick. I didn't respond or do what they need to do. They will come and take it away. Um, whatever you do, you do quickly. Um, even, even with the fall. Um, Adam in the garden. 
devil, he give the devil time, convince him. Guess what happened? He fall, right? Um, the things that he didn't do, he, he should have done. You know, God have gave him work to do, and I don't know, he went sightseeing or something, but um, he he he, he ended up falling. And what I'm saying is this: that the devil, which we're gonna touch next week, um, is like a roaring lion, going around seeking whom he can devour. And that's why we cannot be proud. We have not arrived um, because we are still in this flesh. The sinful nature is still there. And when we think we stand, the scripture say what? Take heed lest we fall. Um, the flesh, this is a real fight. And daily we have to be what? Submitting ourselves to, to the spirit of God so we can walk and walk in victory. Um, anyone have anything to say? Uh, this is the time. I was trying to find a scripture that says that um, that after we have been uh, regenerated, mm -hmm. we should um, no, no longer walk in sin because, you know, we're relying on God's grace. And I think that scripture said, God forbid for whatsoever man saw it, that shall he reap. Yes. So there's a reward system for ungodliness. So, you know, if God said forbid, that means, <clears throat> you know, because we have the is indwelling Holy Spirit, he has given us the very to, to actually um, resist the evil one and resist sin. So we don't want to make anyone here feel that they have no hope, but our hope rests in um in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that he has given us. I, I think we need to understand that we must manifest the spirit of God at, at all times. That that should be something high up in, in our minds. That w this is the way we're walking. And, and when the temptation comes, we, we, are, we are right there with our armament on to counteract it. If, if we kind of get cocky and think that, oh, we, we pass that or we're bigger than that, then, then we're sitting up ourselves for a, a big fall. And um, we, we need to be very careful because as John said there, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, we, 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 have, we have to know that the devil is, is never, never taking a break or, or a recess. Amen. We have to be continually confessing our sins and our shortcomings. we we'll identify them, recognize them, fight against them, and ask God's, uh, you know, strength to, to overcome them. Yes, sir. You know, um, I have this, I have this, um, scripture that um, drilled in my head a long time ago, um, Hebrews 12, 4. It, and it came back again um, during this study. Um, let me get back to my page here. Hebrews 12, 4 said, you, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, unto blood striving against sin. Um, now, that, 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 that scripture um, kind of struck me in a, a different way. Maybe not the, the proper interpretation, but I was thinking about it in this light, that um, the desire that we should have to do what God wants us to do should be, I'm going to do what God wants us to do, even if it killed me, <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that, that's the mentality we should have. And like the scripture said, we, we have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, right? And um, sometimes, and, 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 and now I'm going to use temptation. We feel that if we don't give in to the temptation, we're going to die, right? But God said, you should not die. <laughs> I just die. I, 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 you know, you're fine or you wouldn't die, right? You, but we feel like if I don't give in to the temptation, I'm going to die. 
you can, but 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 he is saying you, you you should resist even if you're gonna die, right? You should resist even if you're gonna die, and um and that should be our attitude, right? That um uh, we resist um resist the urge of the flesh and yield to the spirit of God, and um and that we can have daily victory, um but. Yes, we have to recognize that this sinful nature did not go anywhere when we got saved. And um, from all we can see and what we're studying, it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere either, right? Uh, we're going to have it till Jesus comes. <laughs> we're going to have it till Jesus comes. So we have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. And, um, and we should deal with it because thank be to God, he has given us the victory. Now, my Bible studies end right there. Next week, um, and, and, and I'll open the floor to anyone who wants to add anything. Next week, we're going to talk about the devil. And, um, and this is the only time in a Bible study where we're going to allow you to finally say, just this one time, the reason why you did what you did, it was because of the devil. The devil made me did it, OK? So all those stuff that you wanted to blame on the devil, we allow you to bring the list, come. We get it out once and for all. Because after this Bible study, um, each one of us is going to take responsibility for whatever we do, right? But next week, you get to say, the devil make me do it. Because we're going to look at how he tempts us and how he um, try to wreak havoc in our life as we try to walk this um, um, walk and live this righteous life. Man, what, what do you want to do? Let me tell you all the things that they let me do. <laughs> well, you can you can bring the list out next week. I'm going to blame my brother. <laughs> I'll tell you what my brother did. In, in other words, uh, um, we can, um, what is, is the word I'm using, right? Commute, we can commute them next week. But after next week, you, you got to bear the burden yourself, right? <laughs> We, all we right. come with all of those things that the devil make you do next week. But after next week, that's it. That's it. Uh, whatever you do, it's going to be on you. Right? If, you yeah. think, if you think that's what you're going to do, that after next week, then you're free. Then you make a sad mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But um, in all seriousness, um, next week, we're going to look at it. And um, are we, you know, um, like the Apostle Paul said, we're not ignorant of his schemes, right? And um, because behind the sin and the sinful things that we do in this world, if the architect, the, the, the prince of this thing, he designed this thing because he's doing everything to keep us from fulfilling the will of God. And, um, and um, he, or, he is our arch enemy. And, um, and we need to recognize that and don't play by his rule because we will lose, right? We will lose. But uh, we're not faint-hearted because God has given us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. So next week, that's what we will look at. The, um, the devil and how he um, influences us in our spiritual warfare. Amen. Hey. All right. Thank I, you, Brother Patrick. I have to run, gentlemen. Guys, okay? Uh, all right, Brother Brown. All right. Good night, Brother Brown. Everybody have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Sister Maxine, you can <laughs> can you thank thank you, Brother Patrick. Again for yes, sir. a good study. Um, and we look forward to dealing with the devil next week. God Yes, me. sir. Uh, so it was good to see everyone out tonight. And uh, keep passing on the word and, and the link so others can join us. You had um um uh, do it freighter with us this evening. Um, first timer for, uh, with uh, right. on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. so we welcome we welcome him. And um, we're gonna ask Sister Maxine, would you mind closing us in a word of, with a word of prayer, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks, Lord, and glory, Lord, for allowing us to meet this way again, Lord, that we can study your words. 
And we thank you, Lord, for the revelation, Lord, that you have brought to us. Oh, God, as we study, Lord, how we are to live. We thank you, Lord, because your word, Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. Mm -hmm. And Father God, we know, Lord, that this journey that we are on, Lord, the spiritual journey, you told us, Lord, that it, it would not be an easy road. But you promise, oh God, that you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to empower us, Lord. And because Jesus overcame, Lord, we too can be overcomers. And so, Father, we just ask, Lord, that whenever we are faced with temptations, Father God, that you will give us the strength, Lord, to not yield. But, oh God, you'll help us to be victorious. And we just pray, Lord, that you will strengthen our walk with your God. Help us to, to live the life that you have called us to live. Father God, to bring honor and glory to your matchless name. And we just want to lift up those right now, oh God, who have fallen, Lord, because of the, 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 the enemy, oh God, that brought temptations. And, oh God, because of weakness, they have fallen in this pit, Father God. And we ask, Lord, that you will forgive and you'll bring healing, Lord, and restoration, Lord, and reconciliation to yourself, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you're a merciful Father. You're a compassionate, Lord. And we pray, O oh God, for lives that have been destroyed because of temptations, Father God, that we have yielded to. And we ask, Lord, that you just bring total healing and deliverance, Father God. And, O oh God, we give you thanks again, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, that we can meet in this fashion, Lord, to discuss your word and to, to, to encourage one another, Father God, because you said, Lord, that wherever we are, we are gathered together, Lord, you'll be in the midst of us, Father God, and we know that you'll continue to lead and to guide us, and we give you thanks, Father God, and we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, and, oh God, we look forward to that day. Oh God, when there'll be no more crying, no more dying, no more sin, no more pain, no more sickness, Father God, because you, Lord, you will be the one to reign over us. And so, Lord, we just give you praise and we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Maxine. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. All right, guys. Have a good night. Pray up each other. Remember, we, remember your list for next week. Pray, next week. Said. pray up. Come with each other. And then, and then you have to throw pray. it away after next week. Remember what? <laughs> Let's say, remember the, your list, like Brother Patrick said, but then after <laughs> next week, God really you have to throw it away. <laughs> no, no. Well, we have to be careful, Brother Patrick. Um, <laughs> yes, and because, you know, um, we'll talk. <laughs> you know, I, no. I was gonna say what Brother Dan is trying to hint to you know. Um, I was looking for the scripture. I think Jesus said to his disciple, um, I have some things to say, but I'm not gonna say it now because they're not ready. Cannot bear it. The, 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 no, 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 not the camp. <laughs> the evil one cometh and he have no part in me, right? And so what Brother Dan is hinting, because we're gonna study about him, it's probably not gonna be nice for us for the coming week, right? <laughs> oh, I just said to pray up each other. That's all. So do do pray up because we're gonna be revealing some things that he don't want us to reveal against him, right? Yeah. Um, so we have, we have to preach, you know, pray for yeah. 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 So pray for all me, right, everybody. Expose him. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Thanks again. Bye. Bye. All right, no problem. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right, guys. <laughs>